So again, welcome to, the, to this um, third session on uh, SUR, uh, third and last one, where we will, um, as I mentioned, um, talk about uh, the creation of an SUR without any template, without any CT. So we start the creation of SUR in the system from scratch. We will see that. Um, don't worry about that. Um, uh, the steps are very similar to what we have seen in the previous session, so you will not um, uh, be lost. Uh, there is no new elements mainly in this session. Uh, we will also um, uh, cover the reporting part. We have touched upon a little bit about the reviewing of an SUR um, that you can change and amend, um, delete, annexes, uh, add items. So we will see that again today uh, on once we create the SUR from scratch. Um, we will go into the system and show you how this is done. Uh, directly, so we might not spend too much time on the PowerPoint, but um, on the presentation. But we will send this to you uh, via email, and hopefully um, the PowerPoints are helpful because they are very detailed. We are not going through it uh, during the session, but it's also mainly for you um, to take as a reference uh, document. So then, after for the exercise, you can also uh, use that. Um, and I see that Chalini just jo joined now. So welcome, Chalini. Uh, you are uh, uh, you have been put as a panelist, and if you want to intervene or correct, uh, don't hesitate um, to do so. Um, so we do the demo, and then we have prepared for you an exercise, which is. Um, a common exercise for everybody, um, and um, creation of an SUR without an SAT from scratch um, is possible for uh, all types of users, so you don't need a, um, a specific role for that. Um, so all um, uh, the all of you will be able to create um, uh, an SUR without a SAT. Uh, and of course, we still have today our um, support session. One hour we remain available for you in case of questions um, for any support um, is needed for the exercise. Um, we um, encourage you um, to send us your exercise of day one and day two, even if it's not done yet. So I think uh, yesterday we received more or less um, 14, 13, 14 uh, uh, exercise. So if you have, did not have a chance to do the exercise, please do and send us that by um, tomorrow end of business. Uh, as we mentioned previously, this is the exercise are part of the certification. So if you're not completing and sending us or trying at least to do the exercise, um, unfortunately, you are kind of uh, disqualified for the certificate. So the certificate um, covers uh, everything, not just the final test, but the pre the, your attendance and also the, the um, completion of the exercise. So um, before we start starting um, into the um, topic of the day, we would like to uh, review quickly what we have seen yesterday. So yesterday we covered uh, the creation of an ACT, which is mainly done by administrator um, use, I mean, user with administrator role or, or access. So not all of you um, were asked to, to do that. Uh, however, the steps to create an ACT um, is very similar to the steps to create an SUR from scratch. So um, creation of headers, creation of annexes, etc., cetera, um, is very, very similar into the system. So you will see later um, that uh, uh, what we are covering today is somehow kind of a recap of what we've done yesterday. We have also seen that we could create an SUR from an existing SAT. So once you have a template and it's um, correspond corresponding to your need, you can uh, take the SAT and it, I mean, it saves you a lot of time. Um, then you only have to uh, update, amend uh, slightly the SUR, and then you are ready to go. 
Um, for the exercise of yesterday, um, we uh, received, as I said, um, more or less 14 um, uh, answers, and uh, from the ACT, um, we received um, three or four from uh, the admin user. And my, um, um, I think you have followed very carefully all the steps, so there are no um, big uh, uh, comments on that. The only thing that uh, I would like to highlight, and I would mention that a little bit later, is when you create an ACT, to make it um, available, for, to make it possible to create an SUR from there, you need to um, update the statute. So as a draft SAT, you cannot create an SUR from, them, from there. So um, I don't know if I, I can show you my screen, then it makes a little bit more sense. Do you see my screen? So, um, no, let me, okay. So you have here all the list of existing SATs, and uh, as you can see, some of you have created um, SATs for the ex for yesterday exercise, and you have last. I don't know if I've, I have highlighted that um, um, yesterday or. Um, or or at least mention it, um, you have left the statute of the ACT as draft. But if I click on this one, you see that from there, it, mm, I cannot create an SUR. You need to select an active ACT to be able to create an SUR. Okay? And actually, um, When you select an expired SAT, this is the same. So once your SAT is finalized and has been approved, you need to make sure that it is active. Um, the approval is outside the system, but however, you need to update that in, in, um, um, in the system here. So just wanted to highlight that again, because um, you might have a lot of drafts, but they won't be available for the planners to create issues. Just um, to mention. Um, I think that is mainly the feedback from yesterday uh, exercise. Otherwise, as I said, um, um, very well done. Um, you have followed and uh, all the different steps, so that's very good. Um, before going further, I we have pre prepared a um, um, short exercise, like yesterday, just uh, as a recap of um, uh, just as a recap of yesterday. So I will open the exercise now, and you have um, three minutes um, to answer to to the questions. Uh, and hopefully, if you have followed yesterday's session, um, and if you did the exercise yesterday, you will be um, able to um, to answer those questions quickly. Very good. So normally you you should see a pop up on your screen with um, uh, five different questions. Um, you have three minutes to answer, and I see that um, some of you are already active and responding.
So I can see that um, most of you have um, answered and finished um, answering the questions. So you still have one minute to go for those who have not started yet. Um, and then we can review all together um, the answers. Okay, very good. So um, time over. Um, I'm just waiting for um, the answers to um, to be collected by the system. Otherwise, I think most of you have have answered the questions. So thank you very much for 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 participating in the exercise. So let me just. Um, Let me just go through the question one by one. Um, just trying to see how I can. Show that. I hope you can see my screen. Um, I think there is a background. I think Shalini. Good morning. Hi. Hey. Um, I think I can hear your background. If you don't mind um, muting yourself, that would mind? be very helpful. I was muted. I think so. I was on mute. <laughs> no worries. No worries. I hope you're doing fine, by the way. <laughs> you don't see? Okay. So let me read the... Oh, you don't see yet. Uh, Okay, let me read um, the questions out loud. So the first question was, under which module can a planner create a special case equipment? So we have seen that yesterday, that the special equipment, special case equipment can be created under SUR and MOU. Um, um, Krishna mentioned um, that this is feasible to, to add and enter in the annex B and C. Um, but under SUR and MOU only, not under the SA team. So can we can a SUR be created from an expired SA team? As I just mentioned before, um, when, once um, while I was doing the recap of yesterday's exercise, this cannot be done one um, from an expired ACT and from a draft ACT. So the ACT needs to be active to be able to create um, an SUR from them. Um, from where the SUR main body text can be downloaded? Um, it is from the system document, part of the system. So it's not from the global uh, lookup, it's not from your desktop, it's from the system document. Once the, the application will be live, uh, you will have always um, uh, you will have always the um, updated version of the main body text. And I see here, um, yes, I can I will repeat the answer to the first question. Um, please send your um, question to all panelists, if you don't mind, because Danny, if you just send that to myself, Danny is not able to monitor it or inter to interrupt me uh, if I don't see um, the question or pay attention to the question. So please, um, if you don't mind, sending uh, your question comment to all panelists. So um, the, quest the first question was, under which, MOU, uh, under which module can a planner create a special case equipment? 
and actually this is under the SUR and MOU. You, the MOU will be launched uh, at a later stage, but you will be able to create, once you create your SUR, you, you will be able to add uh, special equipment there. Okay, and um, once you will have your MOU, from the SUR, you can create the MOU, and then you can also update your MOU based on the agreement. Okay, um, it, won't, it might not be 100% um, uh, fitting the, the SUR that you have drafted, and so you can delete and add equipment, and especially special equipment, special case equipment. Um, where was I? Yes, um, the fourth question was, um, what are the different statuses for an SUR? So you, we have seen yesterday that um, uh, at the moment we update the status of an SUR uh, manually. And the status are draft, internal concurrence, and internally concurred. Okay. Uh, you have, uh, the fifth question was, you have to upload the confidential element of your SUR under the attachment. And the answer is no. We do not upload the confidential elements in the system. It's outside the system. You mention that there are um, elements, confidential elements in your system, but you only mention it, okay? Um, I think that's it uh, for the recap. And I will just uh, come back to one of the questions sent um, by Ellie, who was asking, why do, why do we start by ACT instead of starting by SUR? Um, as I said yesterday, um, the first step of the creation of SUR is um, actually, I think, um, here you go. Um, the first step is the creation of templates. And when you start creating your SUR, you have to check if there is an SAT feeding um, or matching your need. So this is the first step. You first have to create the, the, um, the template to select the, the specific template that is um, needed. If there is no ACT matching your need, then um, that's what we are going to see today. You start on phase two by um, drafting your SUR from scratch. And this is exactly what we are going to say to see today. I hope this clarify um, and answer your question. Um, so that's that's it for the recap. So um, as I said, we will um, review the steps, how we create an SUR from scratch, and as you, you will see, um, it is very similar to what we have seen yesterday. But um, here, actually, we uh, are at the point where, um, as I just explained, we realize that there is no SAT matching our need. So we have to start from scratch, OK? Um, so no existing SAT. So we go in the system, um, and we go into the um, SUR uh, part, and we create the SUR header, OK? Ah, they just step missing there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fernando, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, you are unmuted. Let me mute everybody. Voila. Yes. Um, so, let me, let me start again. Um, and show you the different steps. But I think in my presentation, this is uh, somehow missing. Oh, okay, let me do that like that, because... Oh, 
Okay, then you ca you have a kind of overview of all the different steps. Um, so you are at the point where there is no existing SA team, and then you create an uh, SUR header. So this is the first step. Um, before even starting creating your annex, you have to um, fill in um, the mandatory elements. Your the category, uh, meaning military or police, which will actually um, influence the, all the, the rest of the steps. Um, you have to uh, put a name, which mission name, sorry. Um, you have to um, select the, uh, the unit size, the type, the branch, and all that. This is your SUR header. And once you have created that and it's saved, the system will create a document name for your SUR. And it's created automatically. And then um, uh, from there, you open your SUR header and you go and create an Annex A, Annex B, and C. This is done in the system, OK? And then, as yesterday, we go and uh, select uh, the SUR main body template, which is under the system document. You download the latest version, you update your template, but you update it outside the system. Okay? Um, and then you, of course, create the rest of your annexes. Um, and as yesterday, you uh, export uh, your annex B and C from UCMS. Danny will show us how to do that later. Um, and you put everything together for signature and approval. Okay, this is actually the different steps. So now, um, I, I can see um, DM who is asking if there will be ACT docs uploaded in the system once it goes live. Um, yes, as we explained yesterday, there will be once uh, we will be in production. Um, we will have 13, one, three, um, valid, um, approved SATs that you can work um, work on or use um, once uh, the UCMS will be on production. So, okay. So let's see in the system. Um, Danny, is there any other? Uh, questions? Okay. Okay. Um, one, we are in the system now. Um, so we are, of course, under SUR. You are familiar with that, right? Um, and we go directly into SUR list, okay? Because we were under the SAT. So very important. It's kind of a little bit hidden. So just pay attention to where you create. Um, um, where you land when you open your SUR module. So, uh, very easy, uh, and you will see it, it um, look like, uh, it will be like a déjà vu because uh, we've done that yesterday somehow. First thing is we click on New. And actually, we can do that from the list part and from the form part, okay? As I explained yesterday, and um, as Danny did uh, on the very first day, we have two sections um, on the screen here. This is the list part, and you can create and start from there, or you can um, start from here. It is very similar. One, you will see once I'm updating my line here, my header, it will automatically appear here. So the first thing that I have to choose, actually, is the mission name. Um, Let's choose UNIFIL today, OK? And you, of course, will uh, select, since you are all military uh, for this uh, session, you will select military. And then you would have to select the type. Alors, um, here, I'm sorry, I'm just uh, choosing random uh, combination, OK? So, but, uh, as I said uh, yesterday or the day before, um, the um, classification and uh, structure is um, done by the UN definition. And so um, all that needs to, to make sense and be coherent when you draft your SUR, of course. Um, so I'm just choosing here randomly. 
um, different unit size, unit specialization, and you see um, when you create um, or you click in on new SUR, the statute is draft. This is the by default, okay? And as we've seen yesterday as well, the substatute is work in progress. This is by default. And by default as well, we the effective date is always the date uh, of the creation of, um, of the SUR. And we have seen that in the very um, on Thursday, I think, is um, uh, we don't create new SURs when um, we don't create new SURs when there is a change or amendment. We there are different versions, you see. So you can update the versioning. So um, and here uh, on the very last column, you see. You see S18 name? There's nothing because I started from scratch. There's no S18 link to that specific SUR that I'm creating right now. And actually, um, my document number is not um, created yet um, and I cannot move. You see? Because there are other mandatory fields that need to be filled in and there because my um columns the the um, does not show they, there is no all the options on on the columns here i need to go on my form but don't worry the system will not allow you to go further if you have not um filled in the mandatory field so again you need location and as we mentioned yesterday you can put as many locations as you want uh, the unit structure, and then the troop police strength, and I will put 200, and you will see that this will fill automatically the Annex A. This field is linked to Annex A, okay? And then when I move, um, This is my document number. No, I can just want to expand it. Here you go. So this is always um, triggered by the system, and you can see it on the bottom here automatically. Um, there's always the, the document type, as you are, the mission name, the category, um, the unit type, I think, no, what is the unit type and the size, yes. Okay? So if I want to um, uh, update and continue further, um, I need to open my um, document by clicking here on my uh, the, on the URL link. And here you see there is no annexes yet. I have to create them because um, there is no SAT link to it, and so there is no um, pre. Um, defined annexes. So very easy. For Annex A, it's quite easy because um, it's only the header. And you see, I have clicked on New, and this has been triggered automatically. OK? And then you can also add a comment. Then you go on Annex B, and you have to do the same. First, create the Annex B header by clicking here, and um, then you will be allowed or to create and add the items that you want, as we did yesterday.
Okay, you choose whatever you want. And then you have to put the quantity and put a remark if you want. Okay. And um You can also add special case equipment. I'll take that one, for example, and add it. And in the comment or in the remark, you can um, add any um, specification of the equipment, OK? Um, whatever you, you need to specify there. Um, and if you think that the item that you have created is not the right one, you can, for example, the first one, the mobile here, uh, you can delete it. And then you will always have a um, confirmation question, and this is deleted. Okay? And you can go on and on like that. Um, and if you don't find your item in the list here, uh, you can go through um, all the pages. But um, I think there's um, a lot of pages and a lot of uh, different um, uh, major equipment. Um, I think if you go to query, then you can, um, I don't know, um, search for something, OK? And we, um, we have received a question. And I will maybe let this one for Shalini, um, because I don't have the answer at the moment. So uh, the question is, can we add? more than one equipment at a time, then I don't know <laughs> if the system technically allows it. So Shalini, can you hear me? And I see that. Uh, okay. that yes. So Chris, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, currently, um, the equipment would have to be added individually. Uh, we are looking at some, some options uh, for future releases where we might be able to have a multi-select. Uh, in addition to that, for Annex C, we're looking to see if the, uh, the full list of uh, categories and subcategories can be populated in advance. Uh, so it makes the process a bit easier. But for now, it would have to be uh, one by one. Super. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, once you are there, Chris, I have another uh, question, maybe. Um, how do we include any spe special e uh, case equipment which is not on the list? Um, I think you have explained that yesterday. Um, and um, if you can maybe um, elaborate on that as well. Sure. Uh, when you're when you're adding a piece of equipment uh, for for as a, a LXD line item, uh, you will see a product category description and subcategory as to be determined. Uh, this means that it's it's the actual item uh, name is to be determined because it does not exist in the COE manual. Uh, once that item is selected and and added and the relevant quantity is added, they can provide the specifications of that special case item under remarks. This would then get copied over when a user is um, preparing an MOU from this SUR, uh, where they would, through the negotiations with the TCC PCCs, be able to determine the general fair market value of the item and what the reimbursable rate, and it would then be officially added as a as a product uh, that can that's a special case. I hope that helps. Yeah, sorry. Can you hear me now? Okay, cool. So thanks, Chris. Uh, very helpful. Um, 
while you were talking, I did a query and did a research there um, um, on the to be determined um, category, as you see here. So is this what you were referring to? That, yep, that's exactly it. Okay. Here you go. Thank Very good. Thank, thank you very so much. Krishna? Um, yes. Yes, uh, I was, uh, uh, we received another question related to uh, uh, the situation, in which situation or case do we create an SUR from scratch? So I, I think a, a SUR can be created from scratch when one of the existing SATs uh, doesn't, prove, doesn't prove useful. Uh, so ideally, we don't want users to be creating SURs from scratch. Uh, but as they go through the list of SATs, and, and once again, these are based off of the existing signed and approved uh, RDL SURs. Uh, if, if they want to create it from scratch, then they can. But ideally, the process should be to select an SAT, then make the modifications accordingly as they're preparing uh, the SUR that's mission specific. Thank you very much. Of course. Well noted. Yeah, thank you, Chris. And yes, we. we did explain that um, earlier, but thanks for uh, <laughs> reinforcing again um, uh, this one. So ideally, yes, uh, we start from SAT because it will save us time, um, and um, and also it's already. I mean, the template is there, the frame is there. So, but if you think that none of the existing SAT um, um, correspond to your need or to what you want to, or to the SUR that you want to create, then yes, you have to create, create it from scratch. But um, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Grace, for your <laughs> explanations. Um, okay, so we are now, um, we have seen now uh, how to create Annex B. Uh, so from there, we'll go and create Annex C. And actually, it's very much the same process. We have first to create the header, um, and then uh, add item by item, OK? Um, and then step by step like that. And again, you have to uh, include uh, the service provided by, who is the service provide, uh, providers, um, the same options than yesterday. And for, um, I see here that this has been uh, also pre-populated from the troop police strength in here. But it is editable because maybe you don't need um, um, an office for, one, uh, for 200 people, but only for 100 or whatever. So you can um, go on and on like that. Um, Oops, I'm frozen again. That happens. Okay. Let me try. Here we go. Um, and unfortunately, my okay. So my Annex C header has been saved, but I need to uh, restart um, and insert my uh, the item that I just um, included. So drop down list, and then you save. Here you go, and you go on and on like that, um, and put all the elements uh, that you need, OK? And again, um, applicable strength, you need to, to update it. You can add a remark, etc., etc. Is there any um, question at this stage? No? OK, cool. So, so Yes, uh, just a uh, uh, note of attention for you guys, uh, besides uh, Saida's uh, presentation and, and explanations. Uh, I'm putting in the in the chat several comments based on you know the main remarks that she's made related to the statuses, related to the number of SATs, and some other information. So you can actually uh, take a look at your chat from time to time and see that uh, you know we're inputting some information as well there. Over to you. 
cool. Thank you, Danny. Thanks. Um, yep. Um, I think once you have done that, you have mainly finished your SUR. So it's um, it's um, all done, and you can add, as we explained yesterday, attachment. Um, and part of the exercise today will be to uh, include, export your Annex B, export your Annex C, um, save it, um, export the main um, the main body uh, body text template, and then upload them back in the system. Okay, because that's what you are going to do actually. Uh, in reality, you would have to export Annex B, Annex C, um, put everything together, update your main body um, for approval, and once it's signed, you put back everything. So um, you would have to upload again a file um, by clicking Add a File, and as we explained yesterday, we can add a file and add a new URL. For example, your your documents um, are saved. Um, on the public, um, I don't know, on internet or public uh, public sphere, so you can also add um, uh, a new URL. Okay, so you click and select uh, whatever document you need, and uh, again, and you have uh, again here the same options than yesterday: the tracking, um, uh, the tracking of your actions. Okay, and that's also something that we will ask you to do today, is to tell us, um, to, to, to change the different statute, to tell us what is the latest uh, option or track on, on, your, on the SUR that you have created. I think I have covered all the steps for creating an SUR from scratch. I would like only to um, mention again uh, that the best practice uh, at the moment, the statute and substatute is done manually. Okay, it will be aut automatic uh, at a later stage, but you would need to um, to change that um, each time. So don't forget to track your SUR. Okay, and. When you go back here, um, no, let me. That's the one. And you can see here that I have changed the statute and the substatute. Okay. I think that is um, it for this part of the um, of the training. Let me go back um, to the presentation. Is there any question uh, while I'm doing that in the chat? Is it all clear, guys? If it's not, that's the moment. And otherwise, we are still. Um, we are available for questions after the after the, the the training, so don't worry. We will um, we will cover all that. Um, yes, I think we have. Um, we have covered all the different steps. So, Danny, if there is no question, I will just. Um, Leave you the floor. Thank you very much, Saida. Uh, you hear me well? Yes, very well. So uh, now we're going to jump into the um, into the reporting part of the system. So uh, I'd like to share my screen. Uh, you can just kindly. Perfect. So uh, in the presentation that Saida uh, is. Will be. I mean, we'll share with you uh, later on after the session. You will see the part of reporting. And um, if I may say, this is uh, the, the EU CMS does not have a proper, let's say, reporting uh, 
feature in terms of analyzing the data. But initially, we're go what we are going to show to you, it's um, a way to export your data so uh, in some sort of a report format that you can print afterwards in PDF. You can send PDF and then uh, export and print. So you can attach to the SA as you are and then have it signed offline. So um, I'm going to uh, try to take over now. Presenter, I'm going to share my desktop. Uh, so I'm referring uh, to this part of the presentation where uh, we are going step by step on how uh, we do uh, launch our reports. So, but uh, for the sake of time and you know, in order to really test and feel how the system looks like, uh, I'm going to basically jump into the, the system. So uh, this is the list of SURs. Uh, initially, uh, in terms of reporting and before exporting our annexes, I would like to show to you how you can basically uh, export a list of records. So let's say that uh, you want to basically export this, all these SURs that you have uh, here, that I have here in my, let's say, inbox of SUR list. So uh, if I want to export this list of records, I will have to go to File and Export Data Map. Select Export Data Map. There, as uh, we saw the very first day on navigation, uh, I'm prompted to uh, several options that by default will give me the option to export to Excel. So I click on Next. I opened Excel, in this case, and this is what I see. So this is the list of records in UCMS, but in Excel. So a way to really export and analyze your data in Excel for any type of list of records in UCMS, I'll do it again, I will show it to you. You have to click on File and Export Data Map. Uh, worth saying it's that not in every icon or page in UCMS you will have this option available. Meaning that if I go to Home, for example, uh, if I go to File, this export data map is grayed out. So it would only work in uh, when the system understands that there is a interesting list of records for you to export and analyze, which for sure will be your SUR list or SAT list, right? File, export data map. My VIP reports as well will work, and we'll go to this feature in, in a minute. If I go to system documents, well, I have all these uh, already pre-approved uh, documents. Uh, if I go to file, I can export this data map, but, but basically uh, the Excel is going to give me a bunch of uh, columns with descriptions, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So uh, especially it's interesting when we go through the SUR and in the future, through the MOU and some other documents related to verification reports and stuff like that. So instead of navigating your records using these uh, buttons here, it's always wise to go to file, export your data map, and then you will be able to see uh, all the data there. By just clicking T here, you can create a nice table, and then from there you do your filtering by unit type, category, and so on and so forth. Okay, I hope that's clear. Uh, it's some sort of a reporting functionality from the system point of view. Let's let's call it like that. Like that. And it's always handy there in file export data map. So that's in the part of exporting your records for any type of list. Then in terms of uh, reports themselves, official feature for reporting in ECMS, we have uh, two options. The first, it's my VIP reports. Uh, bear in mind that if you do not see this icon in your screen, it's uh, because of either two reasons. Uh, first, it's hidden. So you will have to make sure that when you go to tools, user preferences, you make sure in tab layout, as we saw the very first day, and forgive me if I'm going too fast, but uh, we'll explain this on, on day one. Uh, I see my BAP reports in order here, not hidden. It's my second uh, icon, not hidden. The first one is SUR, as you can see here, this 
and the second one, the AP reports here, not hidden. So make sure that it's not ticked. So you will be able to see maybe AP reports. On the contrary, it's still, you don't see that uh, icon in the list of available icons, then you will have to contact uh, a support desk in New York in order to make it available for you. So having said that, if I go to my PAP reports, I will see the list of reports or documents that I have launched so far. So basically I will have an inbox with all these uh, report names, the creation date, who is the owner, or in this case, the person who launched these reports, the status of the launching, success or error, the file size, the type of report in terms of output, whether it's an Excel or PDF, and who can have access to that report eventually, which will be your supervisor or some other colleague, but uh, we'll, we'll not get to, into that business uh, for the moment. And then the query string, which is this is a technical uh, information. So basically all reports that you have launched in um, in UCMS will be present here and uh, always to be retrievable uh, anytime. Uh, as you can see, I, re I uh, uh, launched several reports on December 5th and 4th. All of them will be there available for me. But if for any reason uh, these reports are not important for me anymore, so I select two of them, I can always delete Them. Okay, but uh, just uh, remember that uh, you can store, like an inbox, all your reports from here. So this is the main uh, purpose of your my BAP reports icon here. Then, as uh, Saiba so explained uh, uh, previously, you have the list uh, view in my reports, as you can see in SAT and SUR, and down on the bottom in report pa parameters, I will see for each of these reports, which are the main pa parameters. So I will have a bit of more information on the different parameters that are included in my reports. Start time, end time, task ID, file size, and some other information. So uh, this is what we can say about reports, by my VAP, VAP reports, in case that we want to launch a report, and it makes sense related to the CIDA's uh, intervention uh, previously when she uh, works on the Annex A, um, excuse me, Annex B and C. If you want to export as a report the Annex itself, you will have to, and um, pay me attention here, you will have to go to this icon on the upper right corner called reports. It's not so big, so you may miss it. It's close to a uh, sitemap, this, uh, let's say, sphere. So it's the second one when you click there. If it goes, it doesn't go. Yes, yeah, the pop up. Let's see. Uh, well, can we go to SUR? Yeah, sometimes if uh, sometimes the engineer is the the system, it gets uh, same. So I can begin again. Okay, so I, I just click on enter. So you see, once I click here on on reports on this on my icon, there is a small pop up called Run Report. Here, by default, the system is. Uh, understanding that I want to create a report based on the current icon active, which is my VAP reports. So by, by default, it is a, a report named report usage statistic and it comes in PDF. But you have plenty of some other options like uh, HTML, RTF, Excel, PPT, and some others. Okay, and you can put a name on it. Uh, frankly, this uh, feature the reporting feature for my VAP report is not really important from the business point of view, because uh, if we want to uh, report or export our analysis, we will have to go to SUR, okay? So let me go to SUR, and you will understand much better what I mean with exporting annexes. So uh, let's say I'm going to select the second SUR from my list, in Unifil. I think it's the one that uh, we did before. And once I select, I go to my form list 
and I'm going to navigate through the different annexes. Let me click on Annex B here, and I see that Annex B in Unifil, I do have some items listed. So if I do want to um, see the exporting, let's say the report exported only for Annex B, I now with the Annex activate, uh, active, I will have to go to this same icon, Reports. And from there, by default, the report name given to uh, self is wraps as you are Annex B. And I can customize that, and I can put the test Annex B, for example. And I'm going to select the output type as PDF. Uh, as before, you can select some other options. Yeah, best practice is always to export to PDF. Thank you. And then the report locale, uh, this will be the language of the report, which is basically English, but you have some other options there. And then it will be very easy. We just have to click on Submit. And from there, the system will create that report, and I will see that report in my inbox of reports, which is my VIP reports. So I can close this window. I go to my VIP reports. And you see that the first one, the first row, I see my inbox of reporting is test Annex B. Status not yet success uh, because it takes some, some time to be refreshed. Um, in the meantime, as it's going to be created, which takes several minutes, I'm going to create another uh, report in Annex C, for example. So I go to my SUR. I go to the same uh, SUR, which is the one for Unifil. I navigate in the form part to Annex C header. I verify that I do have several items listed in my Annex C. Going to the upper right corner, click on reports. The system understands that the report that is going to be launched, it's based on Annex C. I can put a name, test, and next, see, and the output type, P as well. Click on Submit. I close it, and then if I go to my VIP reports, I will see two lines, text, test Annex C and text uh, Annex B, pending there to be launched. Uh, sometimes, as you don't, you, there is no refresh button in the system. Sometimes what I do is I go to File, I log out, and then I log in again. Click here to log in again. Sometimes that forces the refresh. I go to my VIP reports. It refreshes, it forces the refresh of the, of the annex. So do you see that the status of the first, uh, of the, actually the second report, test Annex C is success. So I can, and the second one's still uh, there pending. So I can go to test Annex C and see how it looks. I click on open. And I can see that uh, this is the, let's say, PDF version of my Annex C, as you can see here, with the uh, SUR name, a number, excuse me, and the Annex C here in the header. Self-sustained with the list of all the different equipments and who is provided, who is providing that equipment with the remarks that the, in this case, the military planner has included in the different annexes. Okay, and as you can see, the annex itself, it's launched in another tab. So if I want to go to my previous uh, reports, my previous tab in the system, I go to the, my reports in the, in the tab. And from there, I can see some other uh, reports. Uh, while this uh, test Annex B has been uh, launched, I can just go to some other uh, reports that I created previously before we started the session. So you can see how it looks in Excel. I uh, did uh, export this report in test Annex, uh, I think it's Annex B in Excel. Let me click. 
I click on open. Then this is one of the, in this case, the, the annex C didn't have any type of, uh, of item, but this is how it looks. This is not official document because it's in Excel, but if you want to really, uh, uh, let's say, analyze the list of items that you have in Excel and play around a bit with the data, it's uh, always wise to go and uh, export into Excel as well. Let me check and verify this one, grab Suranic C as well in Excel. So if you see how it looks. Okay, in this case, we do have some list of items. So from there, you can scroll down and see all the same information, but in Excel. Okay, so if I want to go back to my BAP reports here, this, it's always wise to really, uh, um, let's say, do not delete the, your previous reports uh, because you can always see how it looks like and uh, you can retrieve the information, especially in PDF, if you want to reprint again. But uh, in terms of reporting, really, uh, it's the list of records, as you are in this case, and eventually when we move to the MOU, it will be the same functionality. Once we uh, select the item or the record that we want to create the report upon, in this case, the annexes, we select the record, we navigate through the different annexes that we want to report upon, and from there, we go to the upper icon, and test two, I can call it submit. And uh, if I want to retrieve my report, it will be very easy. I would have to go to my VP reports and wait until that report is being launched. Okay. Um, then remember as well, as I said before, that uh, not for annexes, but if you want to export a list of records in the system, once you are, uh, you see the list of records, you can always go to file and export your data map. Um, more things, uh, once you click on the reports as well, you always have the option to go to My Reports, but My Reports would always take you to My VIP Reports. And VIP, I think it stands for Business Intelligence Process Reports or something like that. Um, so uh, uh, we do encourage to uh, please uh, uh, go through this functionality and see how it works. We think that it's uh, very straightforward, doesn't have really a lot of complexity. And, uh, and I think that you will be asked to launch a couple of reports in the exercise as well. Uh, I think uh, any questions so far? Um, yes. yes, actually a comment from Chris, um, Krishna, who said that you can um, Refresh, also by clicking on query, go to refresh the list instead of refreshing the page. I don't know if you can show that. Uh, in this case, if I go to query, here I do not see the option of refreshing. Define tools. It's the below button under my reports. Under my report, ah, excuse me. the query, yes, query. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny, go. do yes. query and just click go without entering anything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That clears out the query. Ah, okay. Okay. Thank so you. if you have a predefined query on the top right, which you'll always get when you click on a screen, you know, when you click on one mm -hmm. of the icons on top, it always applies that query on the top right. But if you hit query and go, that clears that predefined query, and then you'll get everything. Exactly. Thank you very much, Shelly. So now, actually, I can see, well, test Annex B still is pending there. But uh, yes, yeah, so what I was actually doing is we're going to file, log in, and log out. But it's, uh, yes, it's going query, go without any parameter, and then it will be refreshed. Thank you, Shalini. And a very specific question from uh, Adrian, who's um, asking if um, the number of rows 
are limited to 5,000, like in UNITE um, ID. And um, the answer is yes, although technically, Siebel can return as many as 10,000 raw at the time to prevent the system to slow down and be efficient. The limit on I need is the only is the only for exporting the number of rows, not for query. So just that for so everybody who's reading uh, Shalini um, comment, um, this comes from a question from Adrian. Okay, yeah, Shalini. But there won't be limit in um, in UCMS. But because I need is so uh, heavy in terms of the volumes, because we have thousands and thousands of service requests uh, in a week that when you query, it, res it returns many, many rows, but only when you're trying to export, it lets you export only 5,000 at a time. So that's where the limit is established. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Shalini, for the clarification. Um, I think if there is no other question, I will especially on the reporting. Thank you very much, Danny, for this. Um, I, I don't see any question coming, so I will um, actually, okay, explain the exercise of the day. Um, which is very, very simple, um, as you can imagine, since we have seen um, um, how to create an SUR from, uh, from scratch. What we are going to ask you is, of course, create, um, go in the system and create an SUR from scratch. Uh, so um, I will send you um, instructions. Uh, with credential, uh, meaning with the information that you have to enter to create your own SUR. Uh, you would have to export, as Danny just showed us, the Annex B and the Annex C. You save it on your desktop or you save it on your computer with your name. You have to export the SUR main body template, make any update or change that you want, save it with your name. And once you have those three documents saved, you upload them back under your SUR, under the attachment field or part of the SUR. Is this clear for everybody? If so, please click or tick the yes box under the participant um, list. And if it's not clear, please let me know. Um, I will re-explain. Um, however, um, we are still available one hour to support for any question that you may have, OK? So you go in the system, create your SUR, um, export Annex B, Annex C, um, download the SUR main body, and put that back into the system. You don't have to send us back anything or just tell us done. And if you have any issue, you have our email address there. You will receive in 30 seconds the email with all the instructions and the PowerPoint that you can follow, OK, um, and the credentials. So it's an Excel sheet, as yesterday with all the information you need to create your SUR. This is one thing. Um, another thing is um, don't forget, if you have not done yet, to send us your uh, exercise for day one on the navigation um, to do the online uh, short uh, exercise regarding uh, the processes and the overview and to send us yesterday exercise, meaning creation of ACT if you have an admin uh, user role, um, or creation of an SUR from an ACT. So it's not too late to send, um, to send us your exercise, because 
the exercises are part of the final assessment. Okay. Um, and last but not least, um, the final test. So as we have um, explained on the VTC, there is a short test, which is 10 questions more or less um, to, to go through. And we will um, send you that by tomorrow. And you will have more or less one week until next Thursday to complete the test. So you have plenty of time to review, plenty of time to, to go through your notes. But you please note that you have only one um, chance to pass the test. So you, you, you cannot do that several times, OK? Um, the rating um, uh, to pass the test is 70%, so 70%. So it's 10 questions, quite easy, straightforward. And, um, and you will receive the link by tomorrow. On top of that, uh, we will also, uh, when you will receive the link for the test, you will receive another link for um, uh, the feedback. So um, we, of course, are willing to improve. We will have also another session uh, for police um, uh, department um, in January. So all your feedback is very valuable. So the um, survey feedback is uh, anonymous. So please be on as honest as you, you, you can or you want. Um, we would like just to hear from you is about the um, uh, the content, is it useful for your daily work, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, um, we, we will see, uh, because I see that um, regarding the, the, the final test, um, we would like to receive all the, the exercise and and finalize the exercise before going into the, the test. But we will do our best, uh, Yari, um, to see if we can open the test um, uh, earlier or if we can uh, um, find a solution. Uh, no worries. Uh, uh, we know. We acknowledge that this is the uh, holiday season. And so a lot of people will be on holiday, etc. So uh, don't worry about that. Um, and we will um, confirm a reception of all the exercise to uh, the participant. If you, um, we're just waiting to receive everything before sending emails and confirmation. Okay, so it's not because you have not heard from us that we are not monitoring or receiving your 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 answers. Um, I think that's it. I will stop the recording um, now. Uh, I thank you very much, and um, I I'm, we are, Danny and myself, are still available for one additional hour. Um, and um, we hope that the, those three sessions have been useful um, and that you can apply uh, what you have learned um, in your daily work. Uh, thank you very much, Shalini. Uh, your support uh, and help during the whole process is um, was very, very, very useful and valuable. And thank you to Krishna as well, who has um, put all that together with us and uh, supported us during the whole process. It was a pleasure working with you guys. So thank you very much to all. Thank you, guys. Um, I think the training went really well. Of course, uh, um, we leave the verdict uh, open to the actual users who will start using it on Monday. And